Hey folks, this is Vince with Ads Gaming Addiction, and what you're about to see isn't something I normally do. I actually got to interview and demo a game with a developer today at Game Masters on Babcock Boulevard, soon to be moving to Westview. Um, the developer's name is Steve Foley, and by the way, Steve, um, if I get anything wrong in this video, uh, feel free to email me. I'll put my email in the below description there. I didn't write down the name of the game, and I don't know how many letters are in Pip or Finn. Yes, the name of the game is Pip Finn, and this is a fairly simple game where you're rolling dice and trying to get five in a row, but obviously it's a bit more complicated than that. I do want to stress that this is a demo copy. Um, you can't really buy it anywhere except in Phil's store at Game Masters. There's a couple there for sale, but primarily, you know, the game is still in early development. There was talk about possibly making the pieces, you know, one side white, one side black, like Othello pieces to accommodate. Um, but for the most part, uh, the rules seem to be fairly straightforward. And again, you're rolling dice and you're trying to beat the odds and lay your pieces down in such a way to where you get five in a row. I'll let the developer explain it more in detail. So here we go. Uh, Pip Finn. Pip Finn. Okay, yes. gotcha. All right, so we've got a five by five board for the most part. Yes, five okay. by five grid with the center square as its own five by five grid. Okay. Uh, it is its own square. Oh, okay. um, so each square is separate, but this one has its own properties when it comes to the game. Okay. Cool. Um, so there's two color checkers, marker pieces. Okay. And each side will have one. And the uh, to start, I usually have a, a die roll. Okay. High die roll of the two players will, mm -hmm. will start the game, and they can choose their uh, uh, their numbers for the dies. Oh, okay. Cool. The losing player will choose their color of checker. Oh, okay. Okay, and then the game, basically the concept is you want to create a line of five in a row of your color checker or marker. Okay. Uh, it can be horizontal, vertical, or the two diagonals. Okay. And each square, if you're going for it, this mm -hmm. is the uh, a pawn piece to start a game. If you're choosing a square to go for, and you can choose any square throughout the game, mm -hmm. you would place it where you're going to indicate which square you're rolling for. Okay. Depending on the square, it would be a different number of die rolls. So if you were to be rolling for a white square. Okay. And I should also mention, at this point, uh, players will choose either high numbers or mm -hmm. low numbers. Okay. So I would be potentially say one, two, three. Okay. And you would be four, five, six. Okay. So if I was the low numbers and I'm rolling for a white square. Okay. I wouldn't get it, okay. and it would be your turn. Had I rolled a two, I would get the square, okay, and I would put a marker on okay. it, and it would then be your turn. Gotcha. Uh, if it is a black square, okay, you would roll two die, or two dice. Okay. And same idea, if I'm low numbers, I need to get two low numbers. So this would be a, a no-go, it would be your turn. Okay. Had I rolled two one, I would get the square. Wow. So the black squares are harder to get than the white squares, it sounds like. Yes. Because if you fail on one die, you still lose. Yeah, so the okay. odds are a little harder for the black squares. Gotcha. Um, if it were to be the center square, that's the one that's its own 5x5 five five grid. Okay. You roll all three dice. Okay, wow. And same idea. I'm going for all low numbers. I wouldn't get it. It'd be your turn. Sounds pretty simple. Had I rolled this. One one two, mm -hmm. I would get the square. Oh, okay. So that's how it goes. Cool. Um, if I say got this square, okay, you are allowed to try to knock me off, and you would put the pawn when it would be your turn to indicate you're not trying to knock me off. Okay. It's a white square, so you'd roll one die. One die. Okay. If you got your number, my piece would be knocked off. Okay. If it was a low number, which is my numbers, it would just stay on and it would be my turn. Gotcha. Um, okay. Same goes for the black. You would just have to roll two of your numbers to okay. knock me off. And same as the middle, it would be three die. Okay. Uh, three dice. Gotcha. Now, um, these are the extra rules here. Okay. Um, it doesn't apply to the white squares because it's only one die roll. One die, okay. Uh, this is only for rolling doubles or triples. Okay. So, say I were attempting to roll for this black square, and I'm low numbers. Okay. And I'll explain what happens when I roll doubles of yours. Okay. But say I rolled double threes. Okay. Normally, had I rolled two of my numbers, I would get the square. 
Right. So you still get the square. However, you receive an extra roll. Oh, okay. So then I could choose any other square and roll and see what happens. Okay. Um, if it was the center square and I rolled triple threes, it would be the same idea. I would okay. get the square and an extra roll. Okay. I would choose where to go. Um, so, so on doubles and triples... Oh, okay, so you get to, you get an extra turn basically if you roll the same dice values, except it, for the white square, because there's only one die on the white square. Yeah, so there's no uh, option of rolling a double or triple. Okay, awesome. Now, say I was going for this, and like I actually just rolled a minute ago, say I rolled doubles of your numbers, you would automatically get the square. Oh, okay. And it's still your turn. Wow. Okay. Crazy. And. Same as the middle, it, except it would be triple. Say it happened to roll triple fours, you would get it, and it would still be your turn. Wow, okay. Now, this is the other way that doubles and triples can come into the game. Okay. Say I occupy this square and you want to knock it off. So you're rolling for it. If you were to roll doubles of your number, uh -huh. normally you would have just knocked my piece off. However, because you rolled doubles, you would automatically get Oh, so you replace it. So if you knock someone off with regular a regular roll, then no piece gets added. It's just you knock. It's that just a blank square. Right, but if you roll doubles, then you replace it rather then, than just, okay. Yes. Yeah, oh. yeah. The piece would be knocked off, and okay. you would get it automatically. Okay. Um. Now, same idea goes for the center. Okay. If uh, you're trying to knock me off and you roll triples of your numbers, mm -hmm. it would be knocked off. A replacement. Off and you would get it. Okay. However different than the blank square mm -hmm. advantage you don't receive an extra roll it's just the the marker is automatically replaced that's the extra advantage because the square was occupied mm -hmm. that's where that goes okay. so if it's blank you roll doubles you get the square extra roll okay if it's occupied you roll doubles it gets knocked off replaced with your piece mm -hmm. it's still my turn okay it would alternate like that okay interesting and then, uh, Another option that can happen is, say I'm set like this, and I want to knock your piece off. Okay. And I go to roll two dice for this, right. and I happen to roll, Wow. see that would have been a double <laughs> two, yeah. would have knocked you off, and I would have replaced it automatically. And one. In this case, it would have been the end of the game or round. Right. Um, but for instance, say I happen to roll doubles of your numbers in this situation when I'm mm -hmm. trying to knock you off. You already own the square. Right. So the advantage you get for this is you have the option of removing, in, in your case, you would uh -huh. be my opponent, you can remove any one of my checkers anywhere on the board. Oh, on the board, okay, okay, gotcha. Um, if you were to choose that option, I would still have the roll. Okay. So, so you can remove any checker even if it's the middle checker, which is the hardest to get, or any, uh, it's right. a one that is set to win or something. Right. One in your way. You can remove it. However, I would still receive another roll. Cool. Um, or you can pass on that option. Because, say, this was the scenario when this happened. Mm -hmm. You could remove one of my checkers, and I would roll. However, you're set to win with a one die roll. Yes, yeah, so I might as well try and shoot for that rather than you can, you remove can, yours. Uh, let go of the option mm. at that point. Gotcha. So you have a choice. You either remove a checker and I roll again, or you just take your turn as normal. Cool. So depending on the scenario, that's how it would play. That's really cool. Okay. And you said, when did you develop this? Was this something that you did recently, or did you... This was uh, New Year's Eve, actually, that I had the idea Oh, really? For just it. this past year? Yes. That's cool. Yeah. Any inspiration, or is it just something like just popped into your head and you're like, you just ran with it? Pretty much, like I said, I had a game that was gifted to me around oh, okay. Christmas time. Oh, okay. And it said I wanted to make something for my family and friends. Okay. And I thought about how I had tried to make games, and I thought, why not? And, and so yeah. it just started spinning in my head. And my actual original thought was like a five by five grid. Mm -hmm. You rolled for the squares, but you had higher low numbers. If you got it, you would place a a die on the square mm -hmm. and you had to get five of your numbers in a row mm -hmm. whether it's low or high because you have three of each right and then i started thinking about it well in instead of that what if you use the marker for it right and you just put that and so then when we actually came to play um i went and got dice the next day mm -hmm. new year's day because i didn't have any at the house i drew right. just on a piece of paper that's cool i had checker pieces i had a pawn and i got the dice 
and so we started playing my wife and i mm -hmm. and um as we started to play i came up with the double and triple rules i had an, a sense of what i wanted but we just mm -hmm. played it out that makes came sense. up with the rules and it just seemed to work well and what's nice about rules it's extremely flexible like mm -hmm. you can you can create a kids variant where you can get rid of the whole replacement thing whereas with mm -hmm. like the game that you described is like that's like the advanced version of it but if you wanted mm -hmm. to make it easy for kids or whatever you could totally like get rid of a couple of rules so that the kids wouldn't be as confused yeah. so yeah th there's a lot of flexibility there which is really cool absolutely and yeah. uh i uh came up with it i had like a, a pouch like this and that's how I started out. I just had a fold up piece of paper <laughs> with some checkers in it. Oh, nice. And everything like that. And then uh, when it came to actually design it, I thought this was actually nice to carry it around in this. Mm -hmm. It could be like something you could just throw in your pocket if you even had to, or you know, put it in your backpack. It's not going to take up a lot of room. Nice. So I wanted to go with the cloth type board, was my first idea. Cool. Did so, you make this, or how did I, this come to be? Like, did you? I actually did. Um, oh, nice. Okay. I, I went to. Uh, Michael's to get some supplies. This is like a like a canvas type material. Okay. Um, and then my wife was working a job where she was making uh, gifts for okay. people. And she learned to use a cricket machine. Oh, that's cool. And yeah. she uh, told me, I was like, well, you can actually use that. And mm -hmm. uh, so we worked on it together. We came up with the board, designed it on there. And then uh, this is infusible ink. And you use a heat press and then I just sewed edges. So tried wow. to make it as nice as I could. That's it, that's impressive. I I'm not handy at all. So the fact that you could do this, that's really cool. I yeah. It helped uh, with her knowledge and mine together. It came came out pretty nice. good. I thought. So. That's cool. Do you play a lot of board games, or is this like, like I guess what's your history of board games? Do you have like a ton at home, or are you just familiar um, with a couple, or? More so familiar with like the classics. Gotcha. Um, Catan I, and Splendor and stuff, or you mean more like Scrabble, Monopoly? More so that that's kind of the games I grew up playing. Same. Um, yeah. I like chess. Yeah. Um, oh, good. I used to be, I used to play professionally way back when. Oh, wow. A long time ago. Very nice. I'm rusty now. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Me too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just uh, I enjoyed games. I like puzzles. Mm -hmm. Just a general interest in that kind of thing. But never really got super, I guess you know, into mm -hmm. it with like too many. You know, after a certain age, I guess I kind of fell off of really playing mm -hmm. a lot, unless it just happened to be a family night or something like That's that. That's cool. Yeah. And if you have kids, sometimes, especially if they're young, it's difficult to bring home a Euro game and sit down for 60 to 90 minutes and try and teach them something that's complicated, especially when they're like really young and have attention spans of a gnat. Sure. Like my, my son who has ADHD, he, mm. he couldn't sit still long enough to learn a complicated game. So I had to find ones that were relatively quick, but still thinky enough to where he was yeah. challenged, you know? Sure. So something like this is definitely, you know, up that alley, which is good. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's, once you learn the basic rules and like you see it in action, you kind of forget about it. You, it, it can be a very fast paced game. Mm -hmm. Uh, what I suggest is that, uh, it actually be a best of three. Best of three, okay. Uh, because it is kind of fast paced. There are times, and it all depends on your luckier rolls. There oh, are yeah. times where it can be quick, where someone can just get lucky and someone can just have horrible rolls and someone gets a quick line. Mm -hmm. There are other times where I've played 10, 15 minute rounds. Right. Where it just goes back and forth depending on what happens. Mm -hmm. um, but it can be very fast paced and, and easy and, and quick and fun to learn. So That's cool. Yeah. And I, I can see this, like, this is just my brain talking, but, like, I could totally see this being expanded on at some point in the future, like, ways to mitigate the RNG of dice rolling, like, if there's ways to mitigate dice rolls, like, you know, add a pip or minus a pip on a roll that you've done, mm -hmm. so that you can eas more easily reach your goal that you're trying to get to, something like that, but again, I'm, sure. I'm spitballing here, so, but I, this yeah. is a great, this is a great system that you got going on here, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, are you planning to like crowdfunded at some point or are you just going to stay like a couple of copies for a while and see how it goes or any well, future plans for this uh i hope that it, it can become something because i actually enjoy playing it uh -huh. to the point that you know like yeah i've played it for months now and mm -hmm. it's still kind of fun you yeah know? that's like, good um everyone i've shown i haven't really had anyone say it, they don't enjoy it so i feel mm -hmm. like it's a and this was one of my main goals actually when i created it is i thought a game for everyone to enjoy. I wanted it to be very accessible. Mm -hmm. Somebody can draw this on a piece of paper. They got checkers. They have a, a, a pawn and dice. Okay, yeah. Which, again, maybe for uh, trying to sell the game eventually, that's not really the best 
strategy. Well, However, I want it to be universal. Right, and it's travel size too, so yes. you can easily, it's not like a, a Euro game where you have to like pack that into a suitcase. You can put that in your pocket probably if you tried. Yes. Uh, so that's good. Yeah, and so I wanted it to be like, easily accessible for everybody. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where I came with the um, design of it. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, like I said, I just, I when I started playing it with my wife and kept playing, kept playing, it was like, every round turned out different. Um, Every roll, you know, it's like sometimes it's just crazy <laughs> things that happen. So yeah, it's it all is the odds, the statistics, and, and right. uh, each game does end up different. So it doesn't feel even repetitive in that way. That's um, cool. You don't play the same game two times in a row. It just doesn't happen. So that's cool. Are you selling copies of this? Like I know you said you were selling a couple of copies at Phil's store here. Yes. Um, are you selling them like on a website or something like made to order or? Um, but yeah, to answer your question about what my plans are. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, I'm starting small. This is my first step. Understand. Um, yeah, I totally. Made, Keep made your about, cost small kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it would be worth trying to actually sell. So I started to produce more after cool. I made uh, my first little prototype. Mm -hmm. uh, just, and I made about 30, giving a few away to friends and family. And that's where I'm at. I'm just trying to get off in it, the ground with it. Okay. And, uh, Neat. That's basically where I'm at. Yeah. Cool. Well, congratulations. I Thank mean, you very much. If, if this turns into something great, then, you know, it's you're living the dream. Uh, I've always wanted to create yeah. a game myself, so the fact that people are doing this, I've never actually, I've, I've met a couple of developers locally. A lot of the ones I meet are online. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really nice to actually see someone in person doing yeah. this in Pittsburgh. So, um, yeah, not enough people know about games like this. They they go to the store, they see Scrabble, they see Monopoly, that's all they know. Right. And then when you introduce them to something like this, mm -hmm. it's like their mind gets blown, you sure. know? So. Yeah, that's why I, I, I actually, it's like, yeah, I'd like it to be a success mm -hmm. and I can start selling it and, and be successful like that. But I also just want it to actually be a game people enjoy. Okay. Yes. Like, I'd be just happy knowing there's people out there playing it and having fun. Cool. So. Uh, do you have like a website or is it, are you selling it there or how are you selling it? Uh, right. As of now, I just have it in Phil's store. Phil's store. Okay. And, on on um, Babcock Boulevard here. Yep. And like if somebody were, uh, that I've given a copy to were to play with a family member mm -hmm. or something and ask. That's, gotcha. that's about it. I'm okay. really starting small. Understand. Small okay. steps. Yeah. Understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. What's the usual price tag for this? Is that, uh, do you have a price in mind yet or are you still playing around with the figures? Uh, I do. Um, as of now, mm -hmm. for this first run. Okay. And I think I can get better on it. However, my cost to make each game is $13. Right. Um, so I'd like to get 20 for Phil's scenario. Mm -hmm. I'm selling it for 25 in a okay. store. Okay, makes sense. However, that's like kind of like my goal. If I got were to sell one to a, a friend or a mm -hmm. family member, outside of here i would probably ask for 20. Mm -hmm. that's about average i mean that's i've i've covered i have 500 games in my collection and i've sold some mm -hmm. and that's about average for that's about right you okay. know so that's 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 a good i think that's a good price structure there. and awesome. um i did take the step of getting a website uh -huh. however i haven't actually built it gotcha so it's not really up on a website right mm -hmm. now if it, it does eventually happen it would be pipfingame.com okay awesome is the domain i got yeah i i have a website through wordpress.org and it's totally free like it's part that's free i mean the domain you have to pay for obviously and all that junk but mm -hmm. um the website itself is free so i don't i'm not a i'm not a techie person at all mm -hmm. so wordpress might be something i mean if you're techie then great but if you're not then wordpress might be something to look yeah, into that would help yeah <laughs> So, all right, that's cool. Um, and, and what was your name? My name is Steve Foley. Steve, Steve Foley, gotcha. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for showing me this game. This was uh, really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for showing it. Oh, no problem.